The original Worms is, of course, notable for many reasons. It's pretty much the last Amiga original game that made a real serious impact, coming out in 1995, getting ported to virtually every other machine available, and starting a series that's still going strong today. It's one of the last Amiga series standing. For all that though, the original Worms wasn't fully embraced as an instant smash at the time, it was quite a bit more divisive than that. Now there are 25 entries in the Worms series, and today we're going back to the first one. Thanks to Gary Pinkett for making this request. Now some people do talk a fair bit of shite about Worms. For example, back in the day people talked about how unique the game was, how there was nothing really like it. Now this is blatantly untrue. At its core, Worms is an artillery simulator where you control a person or a vehicle and try to aim their shells at a target, and such games are literally about as old as the introduction of computer games itself. And yes, in case it's crossed your mind, Angry Birds is also an artillery game in quite a similar vein. Worms is in many ways a precursor to Angry Birds, and not just because it features cute creatures. Anyway, the direct lineage of Worms stems from the 1991 PC game Scorched Earth, a game that put you in control of a group of tanks on randomly generated terrain tasked with destroying another group of tanks. Scorched Earth is, of course, a classic, perhaps the most influential game in the whole artillery genre, and Worms certainly knows how in-depth to that game it is. On the Amiga side of things, it is also in-depth to Scorched Tanks, a 1993 game that's basically a successful attempt to bring Scorched Earth to the Amiga. That was very popular, and featured on an Amiga Power cover disc. Following on from this, the original Worms was created by Andy Davidson for a Blitz Basic programming competition won by Amiga Format, which he did not win. However, the game was picked up by Ocean and Team 17 at a trade fair, and the rest is pretty much history, with Worms quickly becoming a big hit in 95. It may have originated on a system that by 95 wasn't receiving much in the way of mainstream press, but the game spread very quickly. Team 17 and Ocean clearly realised that they had a seller on their hands, and by the end of the year it was available on just about every system going while the Amiga original, funnily enough, was one of the last to come out. It didn't arrive until near the end of the year. Worms also had the advantage of straddling the generations. It's on computers, but you can also find it everywhere else. It's on the Mega Drive and the SNES, and it's on the PlayStation and the Saturn. It works well on just about all of them. Some people loved Worms. In fact, it's probably fair to say that most people loved it. And yet there were some major dissenting voices. In particular, the voice of Amiga Power, who only gave it 60%, casting it aside as a clone of Scorched Tanks. Amiga Format, their next door neighbours at Future, gave it 90 and praised it highly, which resulted in the odd jibe back and forth in the mags and, perhaps the odd little argument, maybe even a big fight in the office parking lot that obviously didn't actually happen but would be amusing if it did. Generally though, people loved Worms most everywhere, and on pretty much every platform, even on the 32 bits, where it could have possibly been seen as something a little more outdated due to not being 3D or anything like that. And it's probably fair to say that Worms has contributed a lot to Team 17's continued existence. It's been a known and often successful franchise for over 20 years now. But is that first Amiga game fun to play still? The short answer is yes. Obviously there are better entries in the series, of that there is no doubt, but the basic original Worms, without any of the gimmicks that a lot of the time didn't work so well in later games, is still one of the best entries of the lot. While later games in the series are obviously graphically stronger, the core style hasn't changed all that much and nor has the core gameplay. Worms at its best has always been about strong, artillery-based gameplay, managing your weapons, being good with the bazookas and the grenades. Not a whole lot has changed. Anyway, if you don't know by now, a Worms match consists of a piece of randomly generated terrain upon which up to 16 Worms can be dotted around, separated into teams of four. All teams get a bunch of weapons at their disposal of different classes. Your bread and butter projectiles like bazookas and grenades, the shotgun and Uzi for close range combat, and things like the blowtorch and drill which are useful for tunnelling. Most of those are infinite, but there's also stronger weapons, dynamite, homing missile, airstrike and so on that you have a limited amount of, or they open up only after a few turns. There's also even stronger weapons that you can find in crates that randomly get dropped between turns like the banana bomb or the sheep. Usually whoever makes the best use of these powerful weapons ends up winning the game. Every worm takes their turn to play, they have a set amount of health, usually a hundred, and the last team standing wins. Simple enough. 
Worms is obviously best as a multiplayer game. At the time, Team 17 made a big deal of saying that up to 16 people could play a game of Worms at any one time. People remember the Bit Wars of the 90s, but they tend to forget the multiplayer wars. Those were definitely a thing before online play became commonplace. Anyway, 16 players is theoretically possible through hot seating. Every person could be put into teams and then assigned one particular worm. It would get a bit crowded, mind. Practically two to four players are obviously better with each one controlling a single team, and needless to say it works perfectly as a multiplayer game. It's hard to think of anything really wrong with it in that department. Worms is a party classic. Every turn has an audience. Every turn has the potential for a huge multi-kill or a big time screw up. It's fun for people to play and to watch, no doubt about it. Some of the best fun I've ever had with multiplayer gaming has been in Worms. The hilarity when someone accidentally kills half of their team. The boos and hisses when someone uses the blowtorch to tunnel their way to safety, aka dark side play, one of the big differences between this and Scorched Earth. There's so much there and it's justly a classic. Now if you don't have anyone to play with, well yeah it's alright. There is a campaign mode of sorts, although it's not really worth bothering with. Worms is best played in straight up matches, whether it's with people or against the computer. The computer AI in the first instalment can be a little annoying, as it seems to operate in extremes. Sometimes it'll be utterly perfect, firing a bazooka from one end of the map to the other, perfectly accounting for the wind, and landing it right on an opponent's head. Other times the CPU will walk around aimlessly before blowing itself up, or even walking off the map. I've seen that happen more than once. It's kind of really inconsistent like that. Playing against the computer is still alright, but it's nothing compared to playing with people. The other big question then is, how much Worms does to differentiate itself from the likes of Scorched Earth? Of course, a big part of Worms is its presentation. Scorched Earth was a very basic looking game, whereas Worms obviously comes with a big dollop of humour and so on. Whether the high-pitched voices and the like is charming or annoying is kind of in the eye of the beholder. I've always dug it, but Amiga Power, just for example, very notably didn't and considered it to be too much like Lemmings. Worms takes the best fins from Scorched Earth, the random maps, the immediate playability, and the customization. Playing it never gets old because of that and all the different rules you can set, or the fact that pretty much every map is different. Then there's the minor variations such as the dark side play that also make it stand out a little. Is it incredibly different from Scorched Earth? Well no, but then I do think that's a moot point because the style of game itself is older than the hills and hasn't changed a lot in all that time. Worms may be a variation on Scorched Earth, but that was a variation on something else, and so on. In the end they're both great and they justify their place as classics pretty frickin' easily. Now before we take off, there's one final thing worthy of mention, Worms the Director's Cut. This was an Amiga only update to the original Worms, released in 1997. It's quite rare and it is of course the last Worms game to be released on the Amiga. It's sort of confusing since the subtitle The Director's Cut is also on the originals menu but hey ho. There's not a whole lot different about the game, there's different terrains and all that but it is still the same. What is curious is that a lot of things that most folks think were introduced to the series in Worms 2 and beyond actually come from here. In particular weapons like the Concrete Donkey, the Homing Pigeon or the Holy Hand Grenade. If you've ever wanted to see those weapons in the less cartoony original Worms style, well you can here. It was also the first Worms game to introduce backflipping, which is a really important mechanic. In the end, it's definitely closer to the upcoming Worms 2, as opposed to just being an update in the way that Worms reinforcements on the PC was, and it's definitely the best way to play Worms on the Amiga, not to mention the definitive version of the original game. As I said though, it is quite rare, a very late release for the computer that only sold a few thousand copies, and it'll probably set you back around 70 to 90 pounds if you find it on eBay or whatever. I had a boxed copy of this once, and the fact that I don't anymore is a bit of a kick in the teeth. It is worth a mention though. Anywho, that about wraps it up for the original Worms. Now considering the tastes of the person who requested this review, I quite fancy that it won't be too long before I'm reviewing another Worms game. Not long at all in fact. Not that I mind though, as big as the series is, the thing that's always kind of stopped me from doing a full series retrospective on Worms is that nearly all of the series 25 games are basically the same, only with minor variations. With that in mind, it's nice to just look at one or two of them. 
chances are I'll probably see you next month for Worms Armageddon. But until then it's time to take cover as a big old priceless Min vase is about to put this video to an end. Bye for now! Thanks for watching this video, if you liked it then please do like it, leave comments, subscribe to the channel, go to my Facebook, Twitter, all of that stuff in the description. I would like to again especially thank Gary Pinkett for requesting Worms for me to review. If you fancy asking for a video to be requested as well as perhaps getting the chance to go into Google Hangouts, get some specy tapes, um, ask me questions for the Q&A videos and all that, then please do go to my Patreon, again a link's in the video description. Now for this video I would like to thank the following, Adam Schaefer, Andrew Dalton, Andy Capt, Audi Sawley, Chris Wilkins, Conformist, Dustin Cooper, Gary Pinkett, George Newton, Gruff and Blackpore, Ian Roberts, James Id, James Loveridge, Jason Goy, Jason Leach, Jason Stevens, Johan Eriksson, John Scott, Keith Barlow, L. O'Brien, Lee Norris, ManagerSim.net, Mark Heslop, Mark Johnston, Mark Whittington, Martin Pataki, Lynette McCrone, Ola Fulbean, Pete Morris, Phil Taprog, Proto Margell, Rachel Maxwell, Romeo, Sean Zoltek, Seth Robinson, Simon Gulliver, Taylor Armand, Leon Natural, Tianyo J, Twisted Squote, and V Shardy.